Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashir, Kakwadash, the bunch to the elder apostles of the great Muslim who will, will, and as always, peace and salutations to the hopefully elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And um, this is just uh, my response to uh, the brother's testimony, which, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm not sure if this is uh, the, uh, the brother Zayan in the main camp. You know, just picking up on his voice. You know, I could be wrong, Salakia, if it's not that brother, but it you know, sounds like him. But uh, the brother, you know, he did a video, you know, based on a dream that he had. And uh, it was a, you know, it was a beautiful uh, testimony, man. And I you know, advise brothers and uh, sisters to go ahead and uh, check this uh, video out. Uh, the elder Manatha Zagba, you know, he had uh, we posted it on his page. You, know, you can just go to his page and just uh, watch it. But um, you know, basically what I take from the brother's uh, dream is that the Lord is sing sending signals, you know, to our brothers to, you know, be mindful that these tangibles that we possess on his side, you know, it can, uh, it could be a hindrance to your salvation. And basically to you know be careful all right um we know that you know we're getting close to the end of this thing and uh things are getting ready to change and you got to be willing to walk away from everything because any attachment to this world can you know it can uh it could be a snare unto you you know so um I want to actually go into uh, the scripture that the uh, the brother quoted at the end, because uh, you know that was uh, that particular scripture was a was a perfect follow up, you know, with uh, the testimony, because we're actually running a race, and it's not you know a race to the swift. It's actually a marathon where you're running. And this is a type of uh, run where you don't look back. All right, we're making a run for our deliverance. It's like you don't want to miss, you know, that 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 train. You don't want to miss, you know, that that bus. You don't want to miss your flight. So anything that uh, holds you back can cause a delay and you end up missing that flight. Now we know our salvation of body here is by flight. All right, well, we're going to be beamed up, you know, out of those ships. And, you know, we're going to catch that, that, that flight, so to speak, you know, out of Babylon the Great and, and other parts of the world. So you don't want to miss that. So that's why you got to keep your eyes single and focused, man. Because that's, that's all we're concerned with is, is deliverance, getting the hell up out of here. All right? And, um, you know, the brother said they were in a safe haven. And uh, an order came down from the elder apostle to go to their homes and basically clear their homes up. Because, you know, them things in your homes can be, you know, tangible things that can uh, become a, a obstructive to you. It can become a hindrance. You know, from, you know, personal belongings, you know, things that were uh, passed down to you, uh, you know, luxurious clothes and shoes that you never got a chance to wear, which he even mentioned that in, in his um, lesson, in his video. All right. Uh, trophies that you may have earned in the past, you know, rewards, all type of stuff, man. And that day, you got to be willing to lose, lose it all. Because any that 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 can get in the way of your salvation, you know. So anyway, let's go to that. Let's go to uh, Hebrews, the twelfth chapter, and it's gonna be a you know, when that time comes, it's gonna be a challenge for for a lot of people, you know. But you got to be willing to uh, deny yourself, and this is all part of the fight. Is uh, Hebrews twelve and one it says. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud 
of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do have so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of the Most High. So we look to Yahweh Shai as being an example. All right, this man, he didn't, he was, he was already prepared. He didn't have a place to lay his head. You know, he was just constantly on the move. Because he had a job to, to, to carry forth, and he had to finish it. All right, he, he no longer subjected himself to the will of man, but to the will of, of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So going back to the first verse, it says that let us lay aside every weight. All right. And I actually went into that word weight just to see what it meant. And uh, let's go to it. And the word is uh, ankos. And it says, whatever is prominent, protuberance, bulk, mass. You know, so you might have things in your home that are in bulk. And you might think that because you have that, that you're secure. But none of these, anything tangible is not going to really be your uh, security, man. That's not going to secure you. Your faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is what's going to secure you. It even tells us that in Isaiah 33 and, uh, and 6, knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of, of thy salvation. The fear of the Lord is, is, is your treasure. All right. So the things that you have in bulk or mass, that's not going to uh, deliver you. And even riches, riches profit not in the day of uh, wrath either. All right. All you have is yourself and your faith, your walk. All right. It says, hence a burden, weight, encumbrance. And down here it says a mass as bending or bulging by its load, i.e. burden, hindrance. You see? So a lot of these uh, things that we hold as far as, uh, you know, tangibilities, it could become a hindrance. Okay. And you don't want that to be in the way. So detach. That's pretty much the moral of the story, man. Completely detach yourself, man. Okay. And that's uh, real quick. Let's go to Second Edges 14. Yeah, second Edges 14 in uh, verse 14, it says, let, let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. And what are the burdens of man? You know, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, you know, what you shall put on, your clothes, you know, so on and so forth. Your, your, your riches, you know, how I'm going to feed my family. It says, put off now the weak nature. And now it's time to, uh, you know, gird up thy loins now like a man. Okay. And trust the spirit. It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. All right. So this is a message to uh, detach, detach yourself. You know, don't 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 get so worrisome about these things, man. Because we're we're just coming into the beginning. Of the evils, the sorrows. All right. So let's also go to um. Matter of fact, let's go to uh, Matthew twenty-four. And this is what Yahweh Shai was explaining to his disciples concerning you know seventy A.D. Now, this is uh, Matthew 24, and uh, I'll start at 15. 
And it says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. You see? Because, you know, what is that going to cause? That's going to cause a delay. You worrying about your personal items and things that you, you know, stocked up. Or you might got some things that are in bulk. Because you think that's going to sustain you. Well, if this devil, you know, come, you know comes down and, and bring in the troops. Because according to the, the, the prophecy in 2nd Nedra, it's going to be an insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. In every city. All right. So the Lord gave this instruction, you know, to uh, the disciples. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Now, in the dream, you know, which the opposite actually happened. But basically what I got from it was go and get all this shit up out your home because you don't want to have those things become a stumbling block where you're going to be trying to run back to your house to try to, you know, take things out. Like as if you're going to carry the, carry all that shit with you. But you ain't, none of this stuff is going. You know? We came into the world naked and we're, we're not leaving with, with, with anything. Anything that pertains to Babylon is going to get uh, uh, smoked in the fire, man. Okay? So it says, uh, verse 18, it says, Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. So the Lord is basically saying, leave everything behind. You ain't got time. None of it uh, matters to you. Get to a safe place. That's why he told them to leave this, uh, the city. And those that had that attitude were, no, I'm not leaving my, you know, I'm not going to leave my gold uh, menorah. I'm not going to leave my, you know, my, my, my silk garment. So, you know, Jake chose not to, a good number of them chose not to leave. And we all know what happened according to the history. They got slaughtered, man. It was, it was a bloody mess. Blood all down the steps of the temple. That was killing Jake even in, inside the temple. You know? And, and then you had a lot of Jake that got starved out as well. All right. Now the brother Dream, he went to a safe place. Well, brothers and sisters are, you know, there waiting for the Lord to, you know, pick them up, which we all know in the scriptures, you know, wherever we're at, wherever we, we may be, the Lord's going to just beam us up because, you know, it's going to be a worldwide thing, you know. So there's not going to be a particular secret location that all brothers going to have to report to in order to uh you know make it out of here but you know this is just all you know spiritual you know that it just has significance behind you know the theme of the brother's uh dream all right have no attachment to this place so let's go from there actually i'm, I'm gonna read a little more it says and woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days you know it's going to be crazy, man. You know, that's good. That's another burden in itself, man, having a newborn or, or a child in these times. Now, you brothers and you sisters that believe you're going to be covered, your house is going to be all right. It's, I think this in the second address, the second chapter, the Lord's going to make sure that your children don't uh, see hell. But for the rest of our people, finished. All right, so anyway, it says, uh, verse 20, pray, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And uh, hey, we we coming into a, a winter die off, man, you know, a, a, a dark winter. Well, they, they already are starting to see that things is going to get crazy. You know, more deaths. The supply chain is, is already uh, destroyed. So there's going to be some uh, starvation going on. It's going to be uh, very chaotic. So they're they're preparing, man. They're talking about um, a, a black swan event possibly taking place. When you know you, uh, 
the, the grid can be uh, shut down, turned off. That'll really kick things in the gear. A lot of deaths will, will come from that. So many people, you know, we are, was silly. All of us, really, if you live in a city, you 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 rely upon the grid. You need the internet. You need electricity. You need lights. You need your stove. You need your refrigerator. You know, so. This shows you what mindset to be in. It says, For then shall great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. All right, so the Lord's going to have to shorten the time. That means he's going to speed things up. All right. So let's go from there. and Let's go to the one in uh, Luke 17. It's so Luke 17. And I'm going to start at verse 26. It says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until, that, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now the brother, you know, he when he made haste, you know, he couldn't even stop even for... You know, a dude that he uh, bypassed. Because if he, he said if he would have, you know, stopped and helped the dude and it, it caused a delay, he probably wouldn't have made it. So when the brother actually made it back, the, he, he made it inside and the door closed it, it shut. So nobody was able to come in, come inside, you know. Well, that's how it was in the time of Noah. You know, they didn't have the same mindset that Noah had. They were, they were, they were just, you know, they didn't, they didn't foresee the judgment. They were just carrying on in, in, in their wickedness and their pride, thinking that things were going to continue to, to go the way it is. And then before you know it, they was all, you know, shut out of the ark and the Lord, you know, rained on them. All right. And that's, you know, this truth is, 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 is that hedge of protection. This is a, a, a safe haven, this knowledge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, you know, will basically be hid, you know, from, from the perils, the evils, you know. It says, likewise, also, as it was in the days of life, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. So you already know that they was, you know, they was doing it all, man. All right. They were completely, you know, attached to the world. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And we all know what, what caused it. You know, it was living a life of sin, committing all type of uh, abominations, man, detestable acts. But they was living their regular lives, just like the people are today. All right. It was living in pleasure and the Lord totally uh, decimated them. It says, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in that day which he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. All right? Unless you, you, you're taking it out your house to cast it out. But as far as you being on the move, you ain't going to be able to take none of that stuff with you. All right, it says, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. All right, and that gives context to, it gives context to why Lot's wife looked back. She looked back because she had um, possessions, man. She was actually attached, even though this, that's, that particular uh, society was uh, filthy. You know, she was clearly of that world. And some brothers, you're going to be disappointed when you find out your wife secretly is of the world, too. You know, but we shall see some sisters, you know, they're going to uh, they're going to be willing to, uh, you know, fully detach themselves. And that's just going to be a special spirit that the Lord's going to have to put on our women. But a lot of our women, you know, because they're used to comfort, they love being at ease. Lot's wife, she was at ease. That's why she looked back. 
She wasn't ready to go. Hey, I'm ready to get the fuck out, man. Excuse my, you know, my, my language, but for real. You know, this this this, this too vexing here. You know, it's, it's, it's too much going on. You know, it's, it's definitely worth it, you know, losing your life on this side. Because you're going to gain it eternal on the other side and everything's going to be right. Everything's going to be flat, uh, flipped right side up. Okay, it says, verse 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. All right? And uh, let me get uh, one more script. Now, I actually should have read it a little earlier, but, you know, the video ain't over yet, so I'm going to just bring it out now. Uh, Sirach 11. <clears throat> It's uh, Sirach 11 and uh, 18. And it says, There is that waxeth rich by his weariness and pinching, and this and this his the portion of his reward. Whereas he said, I have found rest, and, and now will eat continually of my goods. And so I'm, I'm going to get cozy. I'm going to you know kick my feet up. And you got guys that's in Israel that has this mentality, man. You know, we're going we're gonna to build, we're going to plant vineyards. We're going to, you know, buy some land and we're going to do this and do that and build our Israelite community. We're going to make money. We're going to do this and do that. It says, and yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him. That's why it says, and uh, Yahweh Shai said it in Luke 21, you know, don't be uh, overcharged with, you know, the cares of his life. You know? And that day come upon you unawares. All right, it says, you know, uh, let us uh, watch and, and, and pray that we be counted worthy to stand before him. It says, and that he must leave those things to others and die. And that can and that can be a, a, a great possibility, man. You putting your trust in tangible things that that don't really. Uh, uh, you know, hold value. That could be a, a hindrance to you, and you thinking that that's going to be your security. You sadly mistaken. And the Lord can take you out and have somebody else, you know, uh, take hold of those things, man. All right, and we all know, you know, the scriptures say that. Let's let's go to it. Isaiah 65 and 13, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. All right? So eventually, even though hell is going to happen, them these men moving and stepping out on faith and not looking back, the Lord's going to actually take care of them. Psalms 55 and uh, was it 21, 22? Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Okay? You're going to be delivered, you know, from, from uh, six troubles. All right? Verse 14, Behold, my servant shall sing for, for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And that's what's going to happen to the wicked of our people, man. All right, especially if you uh, are attached to this world. You're going to be in a world of trouble. Okay? So, and the Lord is, you know, just based off of his mindset, he's already putting us in a safe safe haven, a safe place. All right? The secret place of the Most High, which is his truth. All right? And, and, you know, we've been preparing ourselves, you know, for, you know, what's getting ready to come. So, you know, that's the moral of the story, man. Detach. Okay. And you have a greater chance at salvation, you know. Lay aside to the things that are, that'll hinder you. That, that you know, that's a, a weight unto you. Okay. 
So, uh, you know, this is just my response to uh, the brother's testimony. And Lord willing, this is edifying. And I recommend, you know, you brothers and you a uh, few sisters to go ahead and check it out. Call Lord Yahweh Shai to the next lesson. Shalom.